you will see another peak here. But this data is going up to 2020, so there is no peak. Anyhow, uh, you have to take the log transform of consumption and GDP both. Now, if you make the plot for consumption and uh, log consumption and log GDP, probably you will not see the widening gap. Let me plot. Right? The widening gap is now smooth. And uh, you cannot take the log transform of inflation series because it may carry negative numbers as well. Sometimes there is deflation. And if there is deflation, the log transform will not apply to there. Right? Otherwise, it is not uh, widening day by day and it is not showing non-linearity, so there is no need of taking log transform. So you can use in the model some of the series which are in the log, in the form of log transform and there are some of the series which are not in the form of log transform so there is no issue in this uh, we are doing like this it, this time i have the log of gdp and log of consumption but we don't have the log of inflation we can do this with this Right, now we are going to make model uh, I have said that uh, it's better to start with ARDL because it will automatically tell you where to go. It will automatically tell you which theory is consistent with this data. There are large number of theories which are explaining, uh, explaining the consumption income relationship. And uh, uh, when we are saying theory, this means there is some logical linkage between these. Uh, so we cannot ignore, but uh, one of the theory could be valid, others might, may not be valid. So how to sort out which theory is valid, which is not, the model will automatically guide me. Let me see. I am taking two legs of every variable consumption, log of consumption is my dependent variable, log of GDP and inflation. I am taking these two variables as independent and now I am estimating the model. These are the results. Look. Uh, here R scale is 0 0.9999, up to 4 decimal there is only 9, this means R scale is very high. But uh, remember R scale is a meaningless number for the time series data. This has some meaning if you have cross section data, but in time series you often see such a high uh, R scale. This is not very useful number here. Uh, if you look at the DW statistics, this is exactly equal to 2. Uh, basically, this means that there is no autocorrelation according to this. But again, remember, the DW statistics is also meaningless when you have leg terms. Uh, this can give you some indication where there is whether there is some remaining autocorrelation or not, but this is not usable as a test, basically. Uh, I have estimated this model. Now I want to see whether there is some problem with this estimation, and then I will start reducing this. How can I do this? I have selected this test, and then I am selecting test summary. Right? Uh, there is a 
Number of tests are applied to this. The first test is autocorrelation test, AR12, and the null hypothesis is no autocorrelation. And uh, if you look at this uh, p value, this is 0 0.47. This means the null hypothesis is not rejected. The second test is for autoregressive conditional heteroskedasticity, arch type effect. And this test is also having high p value. So uh, this is also not rejected. There is no conditional heteroskedasticity effect in this model. And then there is normality test. This is also OK. The, the, the null hypothesis is the data is normal. And uh, the output is supporting this view. And then there is hetero test. This is also saying that there is no heteroskedasticity. And the last test is reset test, Ramsey reset test. This test is specification test. And this is also OK. We are not going into the meanings of this, but uh, just it, it also says that model is OK. Right? So far, the, all these things are OK, but there are some problems. What? For example, log of consumption minus 2, this is having p value greater than 5 percent. This means that this variable is insignificant in explaining the dependent variable. So I should uh, exclude this. Similarly, constant is insignificant. The LGDP minus 1 is insignificant. LGDP minus 2 is insignificant and so on. There are large number of insignificant variables in the model. This means the model is so large and we can get same piece of information with a smaller model. If we can get some small model, we don't need to have a large model. Because basically, suppose you are going to give the policy to government, and government asks what you can do for the reduction of inflation. If you have two suggestions, you can give very easily. But if you say for reducing inflation, we should put a check on market, we should control interest rate, we should control the money supply, we should control the exchange rate, we should control the international market, and so and so if you are giving 15 parameters, what the government will get message? The simple model is always better. So this is extraordinarily large. There are many variables which are insignificant, and we should reduce these insignificant variables. How we can do this? For example, I am going to test the second leg variables. Look, second leg variable of inflation, this is having p-value 8%. Second leg variable of uh, uh, GDP, this is having value 67% p-value. This is also insignificant. And the second leg of uh, this is 93% p-value. All the three are insignificant. Now. I want to test whether I can reduce this model by dropping the second leg variables. So let me test. I will go to test. Here I will choose exclusion restriction. I want to exclude three variables. I am choosing L cons 2, LGDP 2, and inflation too. I have selected these three variables by pressing control button. Now, OK. So what I have tested basically, uh, see. I have estimated this model, uh, CT is equal to alpha plus beta 1, CT minus 1, plus beta 2, CT minus 2, plus uh, this is delta naught, YT, plus delta 1, YT minus 1, plus delta 2, YT minus 2, plus Lambda naught pi t, pi is inflation, plus, uh, uh, sorry, gamma. Gamma 1 time pi t minus 1 plus gamma 2 pi 
t minus 2 plus epsilon i have estimated this model and what i have tested i have tested this restriction h not uh, beta 2 delta 2 gamma 2 these are jointly equal to 0 and uh, this is in bracket there is p value this p value is saying that uh, restriction is valid h not accepted right this restriction is saying that the restriction that we have tested is valid so what we can do now I can reduce the model by dropping the second leg variables double click on these variables it's again an output in front of you uh, and uh, you can again apply the test summary to this again all of the tests seem to be valid there is no autocollation no arch effect no heteroskedasticity no non normality and so on so the model is reduced first time we were having nine parameters now i have reduced three parameters and this model is containing